that when people find out all the great things in there for the middle class, they're going to love it as much as Social Security and Medicare and know that the Republicans have been lying about this all the time. We're already paying far more for the uninsured to go to the emergency room. But when we start... And we'll leave this and take you back live to the U.S. House for votes. Proceedings will resume on motions to suspend the rules previously postponed. Votes will be taken in the following order. Concurring in the Senate amendments to H.R. 1412 by the yeas and nays and passing H.R. 3096 de novo. The first electronic vote will be conducted as a 15-minute vote. Remaining electronic votes will be conducted as five-minute votes. The unfinished business is the vote on the motion of the gentleman from Florida, Mr. Miller to suspend the rules and concur in the Senate amendments to H.R. 1412, on which the yeas and nays were ordered. The clerk will report the title of the bill. H.R. 1412, an act to improve and increase the availability of on-job training and apprenticeship programs carried out by the Secretary of Veterans Affairs and for other purposes. Senate amendments. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and concur in the Senate amendments? Members will record their votes by electronic device. This is a 15-minute vote. And the House returns early on this uh, Friday morning to finish up legislative work, a 15-minute vote here on a measure that extends several veterans' programs. One more vote after this, but the, the, the attention all turns to the weekend with sessions scheduled in the House tomorrow legislative work at um, at 2 p.m. Eastern as the the House will await the work of the Senate the Senate today finishing work on the House passed continuing resolution the House passed it last week this is the measure that funds the federal government through December the 15th and would strip away the the health care funding but as amended by the Senate <clears throat> Majority Leader Harry Reid that measure the Senate measure would be shortened to two months and would strip out the health care defunding language and also the debt prioritization language uh, that, the, uh, that the House had put in there. So over in the Senate, they have a series of votes coming up at about uh, 12, 30 Eastern. The first of that will be cloture uh, to end debate on the um, continuing resolution. The Washington Times reporting this morning the top Republican on the Senate's Judiciary Committee, Ted, uh, Chuck Grassley, saying that he supports Ted Cruz's strategy for defunding Obamacare and will oppose cloture uh, when the vote comes up today. Yesterday on the Senate floor in the afternoon, Senator Reid came to the floor to uh, try to accelerate the vote timing to yesterday, to yesterday evening, but that was opposed by Republican Senator Cruz and by uh, Senator Mike Lee of Utah. We want to show you some of that debate from the Senate floor as this House vote continues. The Majority Leader. As I've indicated for, for the entire week, each day that goes by, each hour that goes by, each minute that goes by, we're that much closer to a government shutdown. I've been told that the House needs more time to work on this. Uh, they're saying that maybe what we need is an extension of the CR. Madam President, the stock market, the financial community, the business roundtable, American Chamber of Commerce, all America, 80% of the American people, including 75% of Republicans, thinks what's going on here, not taking care of the finances of this country, is absolutely wrong. There is no reason to stall this. So I ask unanimous consent that at 6.30 p.m. today, all post-culture time be yielded back, with the exception of an hour, but the first minute, first 40 minutes of that hour equally divide between proponents and opponents of the motion and vote closure, and the last 20 minutes reserved for the two leaders, with my having the final 10 minutes and that Senator uh, McConnell would speak before me, if he so chooses. And upon the use relating back of that time, Senate proceed to vote on the motion and vote closure on H.J. Res. 59. That if closure is invoked, all post-closure time be yielded back, Pending read amendment number 1975 be withdrawn. That no other amendments be in order. That the majority leader be recognized to make a motion to waive the applicable budget points of order. The motion to waive is agreed to. The Senate proceed to vote in relation to the read amendment. 
1970, excuse me, <clears throat> 1974, that upon the disposition of that, that amendment, the joint resolution be read a third time. Senate proceed to vote on passage of the joint resolution as amended, if amended. Finally, all after the first vote in the sequence of votes be 10 minutes, and there be two minutes equally divided between the two votes. I would just alert everyone, if we got this agreement, that means we would vote um, up to four times around 7.30 this evening. The House would get the bill um, probably tonight or in the morning as soon as it can be processed. Cloture, it would be a vote on cloture on HARS 59, most to waive budget points for order. It would be amendment on the mikulski reed amendment number 1974 and passage of HARS 59 as amended if amended. That's my request. Madam President. Is there objection? Madam President. Senator from Utah. Reserving the right to object, if we were to vote tomorrow, if we were to have these votes tomorrow, that would represent uh, the product of waiving two separate 30-hour periods, one in connection with the motion to proceed, another in connection with the cloture on the vote, uh, uh, cloture on the bill vote. Uh, the American people are paying attention to this. The American people are watching this. A lot of them have expected this might occur Friday or Saturday. Uh, so I, I, I ask the question, would the majority leader be willing to modify the request slightly uh, with the same provisions in place, but with the votes to occur during tomorrow's session of the Senate? I appreciate Does the majority leader so I, I appreciate modify. my friend's uh, request to modify my amendment, my, I'm sorry, my uh, unanimous consent request. But Madam President, my response to that would be reserving the right to see if I would accept that is this. Everyone in America, everyone, knows what the issues are before this body. The amendment, the Mikulski-Reed amendment that we're going to be required to vote on is pretty simple. It says that we're, there will be nothing dealing with Obamacare. We've changed the date, November 15th, from December 15th, and we've gotten rid of the pay China first. That's it. The so-called anomalies, uh, we, I've met with the Republican leader, staffs have gone over that, no problems with that. Uh, so this, this is an effort to stall, and I don't know why, an effort to stall. It is absolutely unfortunate because I repeat, every minute that goes by is a minute closer to a government shutdown. Because when we finish this, we have to <clears throat> then have the American people focus on whether or not we're going to have a debt ceiling, whether we're going to, again, crash the economy as we did last time that threat came. So unless it's a, a maybe someone thinks that they can come and with their great speaking ability tomorrow, change everything to land, everybody in this body knows how the votes are going to go. This is going back to the House of Representatives. And the House of Representatives has said, they've said publicly and they've said privately, privately, they're going to send something back to us. Now I want to make sure that if they do that, we have time to process it. Stalling until tomorrow means they're not going to get it until Sunday. We would try our utmost to get it to them tonight, Friday, rather than sometime late Saturday or even maybe, well, we could get it to them sometime Saturday. They need time, and under our rules, is, is this some kind of a subterfuge to close the government? Because that's what's going to happen. We are not the House of Representatives. We have rules here that take a while for us to get places. I understand my friend from Utah says that uh, we, have, we have two 30 hours, and you know, we're moving this more quickly than um, the rules require. Madam President, what the American people see here in the Senate, this new Senate, is everything is a big, big stall. Never do your work now. Wait until tomorrow. Maybe I'll give this great speech that will turn the world around. This is senseless. The American people, the, how many times do you get the American people, 80% of them agreeing with anything? They think what's going on in this big stall is bad for the country, and it is. So I do not accept the modification. Madam President. And if, 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 if there's an objection to this, if there's an objection to my request, 
I'll work it out with the Republican leader as to what time we're going to do this. Madam President. Madam President. Is there objection? M Madam President, reserving the right to object. Uh, the the again, senator from Utah. We, we have um, been willing to compromise it. The offer that was made by my colleague, the junior senator from Texas yesterday, from the floor represented a significant compromise. Significantly, I, I believe it was the senator from Nevada, the majority leader, who objected to a unanimous consent request made yesterday by the senator from Texas to proceed with having these votes tomorrow. Uh, this still represents a significant compromise offer, a compromise offer that consolidates, collapses two separate 30-hour periods required by the rules. Um, this is not an unreasonable request. Moreover, I'm not understanding what it is about having a vote tomorrow morning instead of tonight that would make a difference between being able to get something to them tomorrow if we pushed it out versus Sunday. Madam, Ms. Madam President, I'm not going to dwell Majority on this Leader. because I want to yield to the Senator from uh, Tennessee. But I do want to say this. It is as obvious to me and it's as obvious to me as it is to a kindergarten student. They didn't want to vote yesterday. This, the big speeches we heard about how if you voted for cloture, you would vote to extend Obamacare, they turned around and voted for it. This is a big, big charade that is not getting them where they need to go. They want to stop Obamacare. They want to do everything they can. They didn't even want to vote on cloture yesterday. Of course they wanted to skip that and just go a couple days so they could talk longer. People are tired of talking. They want us to get something done here. The government is near the time that it will close. As I said here this morning, a woman who works for the United States Park Service came to a event I had here. She lives in Boulder City, Nevada. She and everybody that works there are afraid they're going to lose their jobs. They know what happened last time. They were laid off and for 29 days and didn't get paid for it. So I yield to my friend from Tennessee. Madam President, I wonder if, uh, if it would be Senator from Tennessee. It would be appropriate if I were to ask the uh, Senator from Utah a question, if he would take the question. Without objection. This has been a rather confusing week, I know. I don't think ever in the history of the Senate have we had a 21-hour filibuster, and then the persons uh, carrying out the filibuster voted for the issue they were filibustering. I don't think that's happened in the history of our country, and I just want to make sure I understand. I was just over at the House and talked to members of leadership there, and they would like to get the piece of legislation from the Senate over there as quickly as possible so they could respond. Now, I think all of us on this side would like to see some changes uh, to the CR, changes that we believe to be good policy. And over on the House side, we have a majority of Republicans. And I know that they would like to send back to us some changes that I think many of us would support. Now, in talking earlier with a senator from Texas, it's my understanding that the reason you don't want to send a bill over to the House who could possibly put in place some very good policies for us here is that you want the American people and the outside groups that you've been in contact with to be able to watch us tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And so it would seem, I'm just asking the question, is it more important to the senator from Texas and the senator from Utah that the people around the country watch this vote, or is it more important to us that we have a good policy outcome from our standpoint and actually have uh, a body that has a majority of Republicans to be able to react and send back something of good policy. This is confusing to me because I know the leadership there wishes to be able to respond as quickly as possible, but I'm understanding the reason we're waiting is that y'all have sent out releases and emails and you want everybody to be able to watch. And it just doesn't seem to me that that's in our nation's interest uh, nor is it candidly uh, in the interest of those who want to see good policy on the conservative side come out of this CR. I just wondered if you might respond to that. Madam President. Madam President. The senator from Texas. Since the senator from Tennessee has made reference to me, I would ask for unanimous consent that I might engage in a colloquy with the senator from Tennessee and the senator from Utah. 
Is there objection? Without objection. Uh, is there objection? Objection. We need time. If there's a reasonable time, I'd be happy to do it, but there's not going to be another performance by anybody here this afternoon. For how long do the senators wish to engage in a colloquy? I, I cannot imagine it would extend beyond 10 minutes. Is there objection to the no. request? No. Without objection. Madam President, I appreciate the senator from Tennessee's comments supporting the majority leader. And I know the senator from supporting Tennessee... Supporting the House of Representatives. I know the senator from Tennessee is, is learned on, on Senate procedures, so that I know that he, he must have made a misstatement when he moments ago suggested that those of us who participated uh, in, in the filibuster the other night, day somehow changed our position in voting for the motion to proceed. And the reason I know the senator from Tennessee is mistaken uh, is because during the course of that filibuster, I explicitly stated I support the motion to proceed. I stated that a week before the filibuster repeatedly. I have always stated that the vote on the motion to proceed, the vote on cloture to motion to proceed, was going to be unanimous. Indeed, I would note that I offered a unanimous consent during that filibuster that we vitiate the cloture and all agree to proceed because everyone in this chamber, I said, I expect the vote will be unanimous. Everyone in this chamber wants to proceed to this bill. Now, the senator from Tennessee, being learned in Senate procedure, knows that there's a big difference between that vote on Wednesday, which I might note when the vote tally was down there for Republicans, I put my, re not only did I vote yes early, but I put my recommendation to, for every Republican to vote yes. Because, of course, we should get on the bill. The vote tomorrow on cloture on the bill is a very different bill, and I know the senator from Tennessee is quite, quite aware of that. The vote tomorrow is a vote to cut off debate on the, on the bill. And so, as I said during the filibuster two days ago, as I said, have said for weeks, it is the vote tomorrow, cloture on the bill, that matters because anyone voting tomorrow in favor of cloture is voting in favor of granting the majority leader the ability to fund Obamacare. And I know my friend from Tennessee understands that, so I'm sure his statement suggesting that the vote on the motion to proceed meant anything other than what it obviously meant, I know that was a statement in error. Well, um, actually, I appreciate this opportunity. Uh, what we have before us is a bill that defunds Obamacare. It's the bill that the House has sent over, so you're right. Tomorrow's vote is a vote to end debate in support of exactly what the House of Representatives has sent over. That is a confusing thing to a lot of folks, but you're exactly right. Uh, the House has put over here, sent over here policy that I actually support, and that is the funding, the health care bill because of the damage that it's creating to our country. Uh, I wish the CR number was a little lower. I wish it was at 967 instead of 988, but that's exactly right. And um, so we're going to be cutting off debate on a bill that the House Republicans have sent over to us. So um, you're exactly right, and uh, that's an important vote. And that is a vote in support of the House, something in addition Supporting the House would be getting whatever we're going to do back over to them so that they are not jammed. But it's my understanding, again, relative to this vote tonight, happening tomorrow instead, is that my two colleagues, who I respect, have sent out emails around the world and turned this into a show, possibly, and therefore they want people around the world to watch, maybe them and others on the Senate floor, and that is taking priority over getting legislation back to the House so they could take action before the country's government shuts down, and by the way, causing them possibly to put in place, again, some other good policies. I, I yield. I appreciate my, my friend from Tennessee's comments. Uh, and I would note that, that he suggested that this is confusion, confusing, and, and, and I guess I don't think it's, it's all that confusing. The senator from Tennessee says that a vote in favor of cloture is a vote in favor of the House bill and in favor of defunding Obamacare. 
If that's the case, then the question I would pose to my friend from Tennessee, why is Majority Leader Harry Reid going to vote the same way you're proposing to vote? Why is every Democrat in this chamber going to vote the way you're proposing to vote? If this is a vote in favor of defunding Obamacare, is it the senator from Tennessee's suggestion that the Majority Leader and the Senate Democrats are confused about this vote? Well, I would respond that after a 21-hour filibuster yesterday, you voted in favor of the thing you're filibustering, and Senator Harry Reid joined you in that, too. So it seems to me that they're very similar. Does the senator from Tennessee dispute that the vote Wednesday was a vote to take up the bill, whereas the vote tomorrow will be a vote that will do two things if there are 60 votes, if enough Republicans cross the aisle, join Majority Leader Harry Reid and the Democrats. It will, number one, cut off all debate, and it will, number two, what makes the vote tomorrow so significant is the majority leader has already filed an amendment. That amendment guts the House continuing resolution and funds Obamacare in its entirety. And given that that amendment is pending, and if cloture is invoked, that amendment can be passed with 51 votes, does the senator from Tennessee disagree that once cloture is invoked, Harry Reid, the majority leader, will be able to fund Obamacare with 51 votes. I agree that the Senate rule that's in place that allows post-cloture uh, votes at uh, a 51-vote majority have, has been there for decades and generations, and it's the same, same rule that we have operated under for decades. So let me just ask this question. So we have a bill before us that I support. I think the senator from Texas supports, the senator from Utah supports, I think. So my question is, we have a bill that we support. The rules of the Senate have been here for decades, for generations, and for centuries in many cases. So are you thinking the House of Representatives would like for us to vote against cloture? on their bill? Well, I thank my friend. Well, let, let me ask you this. And if, if you think that's what they wish for us to do, why is it that they're already developing language and legislation to send back over? It seems to me that they've already indicated that they view this strategy as a box canyon because they understand the Senate rules. And it looks as if, to me, they're already developing language to send something back over because even though we're in the Senate, I know all three of us are relatively new, somehow or another, they knew the Senate rules before they sent it over. So I'm a little confused, and, and tell me what happens if the Senate were not to invoke cloture on a bill that we support, what then happens? I'd like to understand. Well, I, I appreciate that question from my friend from Tennessee, and, and there are several pieces of it. One, he asked, would the House Republicans like for us not to invoke cloture. I can tell you this morning I spoke to over a dozen House members who explicitly said it would be fantastic if Senate Republicans could show the same unity we did and vote against cloture because Majority Leader Reid has filed an amendment to gut our language. I would note also uh, the Senator from Tennessee keeps expressing confusion. I have to admit I, I don't think the American people are confused. And I would ask the senator from Tennessee, you agreed a moment ago, if I understood you correctly, that if 60 senators vote in favor of cloture, Majority Leader Harry Reid will be able to fund Obamacare in its entirety. Let me ask the counterpart. If 41 Republicans stood together and voted against cloture because we said we do not support the amendment that Majority Leader Reid has filed to fund Obamacare. When we told our constituents we oppose Obamacare, we meant it. Yeah. So we are not going to be complicit in giving Harry Reid the ability to fund Obamacare. Would Majority Leader Harry Reid be able to proceed and fund Obamacare if 41 Republicans stood together against cloture? Well, but the thing is, I think the senator from Texas may be confused. We're not going to be voting on the amendment. We'll have the chance to vote on the amendment after the vote on cloture. The vote on cloture tomorrow is a vote on clo ending debate on a bill we support. The amendment that you're talking about... The time for the colloquy has expired. Okay. Is there objection to the unanimous consent request offered by the majority leader? Madam President. 
Madam President. The Senator from Utah. Reserving the right to object, I requested to modify the request made by the Majority Leader. I've already I, turned that down. And he turned that down, and in light of the fact that he's turned it down, I object. Objection is heard. Right. Madam President. The Assistant Majority Leader. Madam President, what we just witnessed was an effort by Senator Harry Reid to move the votes, the critical votes, on keeping the government open to this evening. What we've just heard from the Republican side of the aisle is they want to stall and delay this even more. It isn't just a matter of losing a legislative day in the Senate. The time is still under the control of the Republicans. How much time? I know there was time yielded by Senator Reid to the Republican side to Senator Grassley. So how much time uh, is remaining at this point on the Republican side? The alternating time occurs at the bottom of, I think, at 4.30. The alternating time occurs at 4.30 p.m. And at 4.30, then the Democrats are... Right? The Senate amendments are agreed to, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. The unfinished business is the question on suspending the rules and passing H.R. 3096, which the clerk will report by title. House calendar number 60, H.R. 3096, a bill to designate the building occupied by the Federal Bureau of Investigation located at 801 Fallen Lane, Vienna, Virginia, as the Mark Michael D. Resnick Terrace Screening Center. The question is, will the House suspend the rules and pass the bill? So many as are in favor say aye. Those opposed, no. In the opinion of the chair, two-thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The bill is... Speaker, we seek a reported vote. Recorded votes requested. Those favoring a recorded vote will rise. Sufficient number risen. A recorded vote is ordered. Members will record their votes by electronic device. This is a five-minute vote. And this is the last recorded vote today, but the House is coming in this weekend. That's to finish up work from the Senate. The Senate today is finishing work on the continuing resolution that was passed by the House last week. Four votes coming up in the U.S. Senate beginning at 12.30 Eastern, as amended by the Senate Majority Leader. The Senate continuing resolution would be for two months through November the 15th, and the Senate would strip out that health care defunding language and the debt prioritization language that was in the House version. You can follow Senate coverage in those votes on C-SPAN 2. Republican leadership in the House, meanwhile, has scheduled weekend sessions for work on any, any uh, Senate-approved measures. The House will be in tomorrow, Saturday at 10 a.m. Eastern, for morning hour speeches, legislative work tomorrow at noon.
nays are 403. The nays are two. Two thirds being in the affirmative, the rules are suspended. The bill is passed. And without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid on the table. House will be in order. The House will be in order. What purpose does the gentleman from Maryland seek recognition? Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent to speak out of order for one minute for the purpose of inquiring on the majority leader of the schedule uh, for the uh, coming uh, the day and uh, weekend. Order. The gentleman from Virginia is recognized. Uh, Mr. Speaker. I take it there's no objection to my unanimous you know, consent request? Without objection. Uh, thank you. And uh, I would be glad to yield uh, then uh, under that uh, to my friend, the Majority Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I thank the gentleman, Democratic Whip, uh, and uh, refer him to the announcement that uh, we came out from my office uh, that we uh, intend for the Senate to act on the continuing resolution sometime today to receive it here in the House either this afternoon or this evening. And as per the announcement that uh, we sent out, uh, the House will meet uh, at 10 a.m. for morning hour tomorrow on Saturday at noon for legislative business. Um, and uh, members are advised uh, that we could vote at any point tomorrow or Sunday until the situation surrounding uh, the CR is resolved. I yield back. I thank the gentleman for his comments. Uh, would it be... Uh safe to tell the members there will be no votes uh, before 1 o'clock uh, tomorrow, do you think? I yield to my friend. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I would re respond to the gentleman, yes, that would be correct. I thank the gentleman. And uh, does the gentleman intend to meet on Sunday if uh, we have acted on the CR uh, tomorrow? And I yield, back, yield to the uh, gentleman. Mr. Speaker, I would say to the gentleman about Sunday's schedule pending action tomorrow, um, we will, I, I'm hesitant to commit that there would be no votes on Sunday. I do know, Mr. Speaker, that we're dealing with a day of worship for many people and would work with that, um, that fact uh, as well if that's the purpose of his question. I yield back. I thank the gentleman for his response, and uh, I will yield back the balance of my time. Gentleman yields back. Chair will now entertain requests for one minute speeches. Chair rec recognizes the gentleman. All right, let's. Without objection, the gentlewoman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, the House is not in order. House come to order. The House will come to order. Gentlewoman from North Carolina. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If there's one thing I know that hardworking taxpayers back home in my district need in these. The House will come to order. Please remove your conversations from the floor. Gentlewoman from North Carolina is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. If there's one thing I know that hardworking taxpayers back home in my district need in these tough economic times, it's certainty. It's tough enough putting food on the table and putting gas in the car without worrying that an out-of-control federal government is going to make life harder for you and your family. That's why last week my colleagues and I in the House passed legislation that provides some of that certainty. 
We don't want our fellow Americans to see their insurance premiums shoot up or lose their insurance altogether because of the president's unworkable health care law. And we want our government to stay open. That's what the American people need, and that's what the House has acted to do. Now it's time for the Senate to act as well. I yield back. For what purpose does the distinguished gentleman from Maryland uh, seek recognition? Get down to speak out of order for one minute. Without Goodbye. objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Ladies and gentlemen of this House, there are 435 of us that have been asked by our fellow citizens to come to Washington, D.C. to have the extraordinary privilege of sitting on this floor and making, they hope, responsible decisions for their country. I regret that the House is not full at this point in time. I have a reputation for working across the aisle. I cherish that reputation because I believe that all of us have been given an honor and each of us ought to respect that. House that in order. The House will come to order. Ladies and gentlemen of this House, we are days away from shutting down the government. We are a few more days from defaulting on the credit of the United States of America. I believe there are a small number of this House who are holding us captive and rendering apparently this House unable to reach compromise. The American people surely will not reward any one of us. There is, in my opinion, Mr. Speaker, a working majority for responsibility in this House. I choose to believe that, I do believe it, and I pray that it is the case. And I ask my colleagues to come together on behalf of the American people and our great country to act responsibly. And I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman's time has expired. What purpose does the gentlewoman from North Carolina seek recognition? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I ask unanimous consent that when the House adjourns today, it adjourn to meet at 10 a.m. tomorrow for morning hour debate and noon for legislative business. Without objection? For what purpose does the gentleman from Michigan seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, I rise today in opposition to the United Nations Arms Trade Treaty. Secretary of State John Kerry signed this treaty on behalf of the Obama administration this past Wednesday. While I support keeping dangerous weapons out of the hands of international terrorists and bad actors, I believe that this treaty represents a significant threat to our Second Amendment rights. The State Department itself has acknowledged that this treaty is ambiguous and that any potential obligations imposed by the treaty are difficult to predict. In addition, once ratified, it will be possible to amend this treaty with the support of just 75 percent of the signing members, potentially locking the United States into more restrictions down the road. Like many people from my district, I grew up around firearms and I'm a lifelong gun owner. The responsible use of guns for sport and for hunting is a way of life in northern Michigan. And I do not want to see this way of life or our Second Amendment rights be threatened by a poorly thought out United Nations agreement. I urge my college and the House to oppose this treaty and join me in standing up for the millions of law-abiding gun owners in America. Thank you. I yield back my time. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Georgia seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman from Georgia is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today as a member of the Safe Climate Caucus. How much longer will the Republicans deny the science of climate change? 
Today, the world's leading climate change scientist said that it is extremely likely that human influence has been the dominant cause of climate change. And in fact, uh, just reading last night in the BBC, there's an article about a UN report that finds that with 95% certainty, mankind uh, has uh, contributed uh, mightily to climate change. Last week, scientists from Stanford and Purdue universities found that the eastern and central United States will likely see more severe weather by the middle of this century due to climate change. And despite this overwhelming evidence, Republicans proudly proclaim themselves as science deniers. When will my colleagues take their heads out of the sand and work with Democrats to pre preserve our climate and economy for the future? I yield back. The chair will receive a message. Mr. Speaker, a message from the Senate. Mr. Speaker. Madam Secretary. I have been directed by the Senate to inform the House that the Senate has passed S. 1348 to reauthorize the Congressional Award Act, in which the concurrence of the House is requested. Thank you. For what purpose does the gentlelady from Nevada seek recognition? Objection. The gentlelady is recognized for one minute. I rise today to recognize World Tourism Day. This year's theme is tourism and water, protecting our common future, and I join with the Las Vegas Convention and Visitors Authority in celebrating this theme. For Southern Nevada, this combines two of our most prized resources, tourism and water. Last year, nearly 40 million visitors came to Las Vegas. We hosted over 21,000 conventions and meetings, which brought in some 5 million national and international visitors, most of whom spent time in District 1. To continue successfully attracting and serving tourists and residents in the middle of the desert, Southern Nevada has learned to be especially conscientious about water usage. In Las Vegas, we found efficient ways to maximize our water usage to enhance the experience of visitors while safeguarding this critical resource for the long term. Every day, tens of thousands of tourists pass to, by to take in the majestic beauty of the fountains at the Bellagio, not realizing that they come from recycled water. There's also City Center, a resort destination located on the Strip, which is the world's largest environmentally sustainable mixed-use new construction development to receive LEED certification. Every year, City Center saves nearly 50 million gallons of water and as a tribute to its commitment to sustainability, proudly display, displays an art exhibit of the Colorado River. Tourism and water, it's a great theme. Come and experience it for yourself only in District 1. I yield back. Gentlelady, uh, <clears throat> time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Pennsylvania seek recognition? Speaker, I request unanimous consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. House Republicans remain committed to defunding, delaying, and dismantling the President's unworkable health care law and our mission becomes more critical with each passing day. We've already begun to see premiums go up for hardworking Americans all across the country. This is bad law that will limit choices in health care and kill American jobs. The House has passed legislation that would defund Obamacare, rein in government spending, and prevent a government shutdown. The law is now in the hands of the Senate. The Senate must now give the American people what they deserve, an honest, transparent debate. As this debate progresses, the American people will know who stands with them in opposition to this disastrous health care law. The House is leading the fight to control spending, stop Obamacare, and protect hardworking Americans, and it is time for the Senate to join us as well. I yield back. For what purpose does the gentleman from California seek recognition? Without objection, the gentleman from California is recognized for one minute. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. My colleagues and I are well aware of how important the next few days are for this country and for the work to be done in this House. We in the House have done our job, however. We have acted to control reckless spending, dismantle the President's unworkable health care law, and keep our government open. 
Now our House passed bill is in the hands of the United States Senate, and we hope they will listen to the will of the people as we in the House have done. The Obama health care takeover is a bad law, it's harmful, and it must be stopped. The American people, having had a chance themselves to read it a little bit, unlike what happened in this House just a few short years ago, they do not want it. We're already beginning to see how it's making insurance premiums go up all over the country. On the average, 99% for men, 62% for women, in a report just came out yesterday. It's unworkable, it's unaffordable, we need to get rid of this law, we need to keep our government open as Republicans have worked to do, and it's time for the Senate to act and protect the needs of the American people. I yield back. For what purposes does the gentleman from California seek recognition? in my remarks. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, each year from September 15th through October 15th, we celebrate Hispanic Heritage Month when we honor the contributions that Latinos have made throughout the communities in our nation. The Hispanic community embodies the idea that if you work hard, you play by the rules, and dream big, there is no limit to what you can achieve. After all, that is the American dream. And achieve is exactly what we have done throughout our history. From serving in our military to running 3.1 million Hispanic-owned businesses, the Hispanic community is an important part of moving our country forward. We also know that to keep our country competitive, we must finally fix a broken immigration system. We believe that it's past time to offer hardworking Americans a pathway to citizenship. The future of our nation depends largely on the future of all of our communities. Together, we keep fighting to give the next generation a meaningful shot at the American dream. That dream is what we celebrate this month in National Hist uh, Latino Hist uh, Heritage Month. My mother used to say, common sense tells us that we ought to always put the country before our politics. I yield back the balance of my time. Gentlemen's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? I ask consent to address the House for one minute. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, the Affordable Care Act is here to stay, saith the President. But his legacy landmark law discriminates. The President has arbitrarily granted extensions to big business, to some small businesses, and some state exchanges. But ordinary Americans, no extensions for them. I guess special interest groups just have more clout with the President than normal people do. Too bad. Everyone should be treated alike. Postpone Obamacare for everybody for one year. Don't discriminate. The second place the President's wonder law discriminates is who is subject to this law of the land. The president touts his law as good for America, but why has he granted over 1,200 waivers for special groups? Waivers to labor unions, for example. That's not fair. Waivers for some, but not for others. So delay Obamacare for at least a year for all Americans, and either grant waivers for all Americans or put those 1,200 groups back into this bill. It's unconstitutional for the constitutional law professor to waive his wand of exemptions and delay for some, but not for others. That's just not fair. And that's just the way it is. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose does the gentleman from Texas seek recognition? Address House for one minute, revise and extend my remarks. Without objection, the gentleman is recognized for one minute. Mr. Speaker, yesterday the President was again defending his health care law, and the Department of Health and Human Services announced even more delays. This train wreck of a health care law is quickly derailing, but the President continues to provide delays and exemptions for everyone except ordinary Americans. Just uh, after the President and the Administration promised time and time again that the exchanges would be ready online October 1st, several states have said consumers they're actually just going to have to wait. Maybe you can send in a paper application if you're, if you're anxious. Last week, on September 19th, I asked the director of the agency charged with implementing the exchanges, will the enrollment process be ready October 1st of this year? I actually posed that as a yes or no question. His answer, quote, consumers will be able to go online 
They will be able to get a determination of what tax subsidies they are eligible for. They will be able to look at the plans that are available where they live. They will be able to see premium net of subsidy that they would have to pay, and they will be able to choose a plan and get enrolled. Hardly a yes or no answer to a yes or no question, but nevertheless, yesterday's actions by HHS to speak what really is the case, his answer should have been no. They will not be ready. I yield back the balance of my time. The gentleman's time has expired. For what purpose is the gentleman from Texas seek recognition?